right? If we're going to edit the stitch effect beforehand, whatever it says in here, we go to this icon. These are our main settings that we can manipulate. Just to get it out of the way for you guys, don't worry about that box. It does not affect you. It's defaulted to what it needs to be. You'll never change it. Okay? Here are the main settings that you concern yourself with. First and foremost, the pitch. Some people refer to that as density. That is how close the stitches are together. Point four is your default. The lower the number, the tighter the stitches. The higher the number, the more open the stitches become. I never recommend going below point three zero very tight. Eventually you're going to start to have thread breaks. It's going to pull. You're just going to have issues. All right? With that, if I'm sewing white thread on a black shirt and I keep seeing that black shirt poking through, I might tighten this number a little bit. 0.37, 0 0.36, okay? I know a lot of people that use 0.35. If I'm stitching a letter or a name on a wicking material, I want to be up in the 0.5s, okay? That's going to give you a much softer a much better stitch out for that wicking type fabric. There's a very fine line here. The more you go up, the more you're going to see your fabric showing through. Corners. I like my corners on. That gives me a good professional miter look. Look here at the corner. The stitches get smaller. They make the turn. Then they get larger. All right. Again, that's your miter corner. Let's think about this for just a second, though. What if this column, now your column is the distance from here to here. Well, what if this column is very narrow already? You're already working with the column width of, let's just say, this distance is around, let's just say it's around 1. Well, one is about as narrow as I like any column for a satin stitch. So what does that mean is going to happen here? These stitches are going to get really small. That's why on very small satins, I turn corners off and the stitches turn. They don't get any shorter. That's on or off. Block corners. If you have a very open pitch, typically for applique, There's a block corner. All the way to the edge. Then sews down. If you use block corners, 
with a density of around 0.4, you're going to end up with a bump right there. Short longs. The only time I use short longs is I'm sorry, the only time I turn off short longs is if I'm doing a puffy foam design. Other than that, short longs is a great feature. I couldn't think of a reason in a regular design that you'd want to turn it off besides puffy foam. Just so you know what it does. And I'm going to use this area to kind of draw real quick. Don't laugh at my drawing here. I've got a curved shape and it's putting the stitches in. Okay? Well, you don't want the same number of stitches on the inside as you have on the outside. So it's going to come in and put some short ones in and then some long ones and some short ones and some long ones. That way it doesn't get too much of a buildup on the inside. All right, that's what short long does. Now, finally, one of the most important ones in here, compensation. A satin stitch by nature is going to pull in on itself. Depending on what fabric you're stitching on, it depends on how much it's going to pull in on itself. You know, t-shirt, sweatshirt material, open weave polo shirts, they're going to pull in more than a denim shirt or a twill shirt. That denim or twill is not going to pull as much as that open weave piquet. Okay, how do I combat that? I give it compensation. Compensation spreads out your satin stitch. See how that stitches out past my outline? That's because I have 15% comp. Zero. See the difference? All right. So I almost always use comp with my satins. Last thing is my underlay. I have 11 choices for a satin stitch. Depending on what I'm stitching on, that's the underlay that I choose. If I don't know, I'm unsure, leave it at zigzag, okay? If I'm sewing a lightweight material or I've got a really small area, back it down to one of these up here. If I need just a little bit more, I'm a big fan of the cross underlay. If I'm sewing this on terry cloth, polar fleece, um, beanies, um, towels, robes, blankets, anything that has a high nap, I'm using one of these over here. This will give me more underlay. Alright, so this is editing your stitch effect. You want to see what the differences are? Satin fill, same settings except look down here seating length this tells the software that when you've got a big area that you're trying to make a satin stitch drop a needle penetration every whatever that number is right there okay that way that satin stitch doesn't become too long other than that the settings are like a regular satin except for this over here. All right.
All right. So, 